That's some bullshit. Oh, what do guys do? We do what? once again with NASCAR 08 and in this episode of our season with David Rubin's double zero Domino Toyota Camry we are going to be completing race 2 of 36 which is going to take place at California Speedway for the Auto Club 500 in the last episode we of course raced at Daytona National Speedway for the Daytona 500 and beat my favorite driver Tony Stewart for the win by just inches so this season is off to a fantastic start and I love racing at California Speedway in this game along with quite a few other tracks just because of how consistent the game likes to be. And uh, in my opinion, this game is more difficult than NASCAR 09 as far as AI and maybe the driving model just a slight bit with its transition from the uh, Gen 4 cars to the car of tomorrow. Now, it's still known as California Speedway in this game. And uh, whenever I race this track in NASCAR 09, I think I got a top 5 finish. So my goal in this episode is to get a top 10 if I can. I don't think we should have a problem with that. Let's just go ahead and get to the racetrack. Tony Stewart, who almost won the Daytona 500, is going to be starting on the pole. Bobby Labonte in his Cheerios car starting second. Mark Martin, third. Michael Waltrip in fourth. Jimmy Johnson in fifth. Ken Schrader in sixth. Kurt Busch in seventh. Uh, Jeff Green, eighth. In ninth place, we've got Ryan Newman. And Kyle Busch, who has the fastest lap of this track, or the track record, whatever, is going to be starting in tenth. Oh my god, there are some things in this game that are really freaking laggy, and other things that perform way too quickly. Like, the uh, the race weekend order, it it lags, and then other times it's going really quickly. Oh, okay, car. Oh, oh, oh. I spun the tires, because I'm I'm such a professional. Anyhow, green flags out, and we're underway for 20 laps here, because this is the 500, not the 400. I think they have a 400-mile race for the second auto club race, which was, of course, a thing still. That's a night race. Whenever I said the driving model in this game is it from NASCAR 09, it is definitely true whenever you race with these cars, the uh, Gen 4 cars, because you have to let off the gas throughout the corners, and the NASCAR 09 letting off the gas is hardly encouraged whatsoever at almost every track in the damn game. You can go full throttle around Bristol in the cup cars in NASCAR 09. In this game, you can hardly do that at any track. So, after the first lap of the race, at least we're on the inside, we're going to be in 39th place at the line. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is over here in 38th for some unapparent reason. I mean, he's pretty good at this track, isn't he? In reality? I don't know. Okay. Trying to not make contact with... Uh, uh. And he comes back up the racetrack and brings out a caution. That was not my fault. He didn't give me enough room. Well, so we're going to be skipping laps early on. I mean, that, that defied physics completely. That's not my fault. I went underneath him to pass right there, and, well, I drove up onto him. Of course, I was getting off the gas, but whenever you get off the gas, that doesn't keep the car from going up the track. There's no way to stop the car from going up the track, if you ask me. Okay, we don't need to watch this again. This is off to a horrible start. That is completely polar opposite compared to Daytona. No, we're not taking pit stops to lap into a race. Okay. We didn't spin the tires that time, although I don't know whether or not I can say that we had a better restart. So this really jacks up a race a little bit, um, mainly because I think they drive fast at restarts as they all hit the brakes and make my my statement completely stupid. Okay, we're gonna keep it underneath Brian Vickers in the 83 car. I think that's him. I think Almendinger has the 84 car. Isn't this uh, Almendinger's rookie season? I think it is. Well, anyhow, uh, once again, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is back here. But, um, we did indeed skip a whole freaking lap that we had the opportunity to make passes with. I'm going to loosen this car whenever I take my pit stop, because I hate the way it's driving right now. Oh, golly, that 21 car got me loose whenever he slammed his butt into my face. Ooh, butt face. Got butt faced. There is, um, Ricky Rudd, the 88 car right there. He's not doing too well. Neither is his teammate, David Gillen, so I'm pretty sure Robert Yates is pissed. Golly, I gotta slow down mid-corner. 
I wanted to say this at some point, but that 42 alternate paint scheme right there for one Papamon toy, I thought it was uh, Casey Mears in the last episode, but that 42 car looks extremely similar to the uh, Cars 3 paint scheme that Kyle Larson used in 2017 to win at Michigan with. I mean, if you just look at it, oh my god, it's like extremely similar, so I guess you can say that paint scheme Kyle Larson used was not the first time whenever he won in it. Well, I mean, it, it was the first time that paint scheme was used to win a race, but um, it was not the first time I could say it was race just because um, how similar it is, if you ask me. So we're in 29th now. Build is spreading apart really quickly. I like that about this game because that, that is realistic in NASCAR that spreads out in just a matter of, like, three laps. Okay, is this uh, Scott Riggs? Patrick Carpenter? No, Patrick Carpenter was a rookie. And uh, Patrick Carpontier. Carpontiac, I don't know what you want to call him, but that has to be Scott Riggs because he doesn't have the rookie tape. That's only in NASCAR of 9. This car is just sliding up the track and then it's... Yeah, I gotta get out the gas mid-corner, into the corner. I gotta let out the gas everywhere if I want this car to drive the way I want it to. I have one spot that lap. Yay. Okay. Uh, start. I don't know how to make the car turn. I'm, I mean, I'm turning all the way to the left, but nothing's happening. God damn it. I really want to change this. I mean, it's loose once the car starts turning, but whenever it's not turning, it's extremely tight. It... I don't know, I, I don't know how to make the car start turning right now. Maybe I can turn up the wedge and then drop the tire pressure down by like 10 or something, I don't know. Wow, they all checked up as we came off turn 4. See the 96, the 13 car. Um, Casey Kane right here. Oh my goodness. Got a big run as we come to the front stretch. Pretty soon pit stops are going to happen. We'll be ha halfway through the race. Okay, come on, get the car to start turning. Oh my god! I, mean, I know that I'm driving with Dave Rubin's car, and this is not the best of all race cars, but still. A little loose off turn, too, because we're all three wide right now. Almost four wide if uh, Scott Wimmer had made moves. Here's Kevin Harvick. This was his, um, his first season racing with Shell Pinsoil instead of um, good wrench. I mean, I love the good wrench paint scheme. I kind of love his shell pencil paint scheme, but just a little bit less. It is similar, just different colors, I suppose. Well, I don't know. I look at the side of the car, and I would say it's similar to his good wrench paint scheme, just different in colors, but the front of the car is also different. This has to be Alan Dinger. Jeff Gordon over here in 19th place, as I put him in the 20th, because Alan Dinger was underneath him. Keeping the car at the bottom better now. Oh, ah, Jesus Christ, make a little contact and then you start physicsing me. That's not even a word, but in this game, let's just pretend that physicsing me is uh, whenever they get stuck to you and start turning you down to the bottom of the racetrack sideways. Because that's not realistic whatsoever, and that's like the biggest flaw this game has. They fix it up a little bit in Astro 9, but it can still happen sometimes. As a matter of fact, in Astro 9, um, it happened at this track, but during the night race, on the final lap, if I remember correctly. I was trying to make a pass for the win, and then it happened. Uh, oh my goodness, but in this game, they had some shit to fix. I don't recall this crap happening that much in NASCAR 07. NASCAR 07 and NASCAR 08 have slightly different physics engines. In NASCAR 07, without the assist on, you do have to get off the gas um, a ton just to make corners or be perfect about how you do it. In this game, it's only a little bit different than that. I kind of can feel the changes now that I have all three of those games, 07, 08, and 09. I can feel all the dis differences in the progression between them. So we're going to be making top 10 soon. Kurt Busch soon. Kurt Busch freaking checks up in front of me as we come off turn 4. I don't know why these guys keep hitting the brakes off the floor. That's something I'm starting to notice. And JJ Yelly hit the brakes in the middle of the front stretch. Throwing it all the way in to turn 1. Trying not to go ip in. Ip. 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 Ip is a word up into Yelly. These freaking Warren tires are tossing me sideways constantly. Warren Trek Jr. checks up for Jeff Green. We're going to go underneath him as we go down the back stretch. Um, go up the track so I have room in the turn three. Just, I mean, you would want it. Why wouldn't you want me to have it? Well, it's a good thing I wasn't underneath him going into turn three because the car decided to never get turning. Wow, we were loose off the four. All kinds of shit happens going into turn one and off of turn four, I'll tell you that much. We're finally into the top ten. Uh, leader is Michael Waltrip because this is a great video game, and Michael Waltrip always leads NASCAR races. Of course he does. 
Uh, my competition, Tony Stewart, is still in the top five from the looks of it. Uh, I'm getting so loose on these tires. I'm going to go ahead and take it down pit road this time by because we are past the halfway point finally. Ah, uh, if I can stay at the bottom as we come off turn four so I can get down pit road. Uh, Jeff Green, you don't need to block me. I'm trying to get whatever. It doesn't matter. I give him a bit of a shove. Okay, I'm trying to slow it down and keep it down there. I want to get down pit road. Some are probably be going down pit road with me. Michael Waltrip, the leader, and Tony Stewart. I'm coming with them. Okay. 70! I made it. Oh my god, I barely made it. Holy crap. I saw it freeze at 69, and then uh, it went to the pit option stuff right here. We're not going to be making repairs, which is actually going to make our pit stop faster, so I'm glad I'm doing that. It's only visual damage, in my opinion, so I don't know what they would be repairing in specific. Our car still felt like it was fast. This has been a great race overall. It wasn't off to a good start because we got completely physixed by Reed Sorensen. Uh, oh, that's great. That's fantastic, man. I love you. Uh, I think it was Reed Sorensen in the 41 car. Uh, it, was, it was so long ago, but once we got past that, we were really on the move. We're going to lose so many positions during our pit stop and everything, all because that just totally happened. Also, I have to control the thaws to come off pit road, don't I? I'm going to have to let Jeff Burton by so that I have my room to get back on the track. I'm all the way down the throttle now. We're just loose on the apron. And I'm trying not to get in anybody's way as I get on the track. Oh my god, I almost dumped freaking Elliot Sadler. I kind of decided to not be on the apron anymore because I was already having enough problems as it was controlling the throttle. I find it weird how I'm up, I'm getting up to speed and that slows down whoever this is in the Red Bull car behind me, uh, Alan Dinger, but yet once he slows down his car just picks up speed and it keeps on picking up speed. I don't get that. I mean once you slow down you can't just get your momentum back in the middle of nowhere. The draft isn't strong enough because of how slow I was going, but we're in 31st place right now. And we're going to be passing cars as they come off pit road. Uh, Reed Sorensen is pissed off at me for physicsing me. That's some bullshit. Oh, what do you do? We do you what? Man. That's a flaw about this game. That's a, that's a huge flaw. It happens in NASCAR 09, but oh my god, that took it to a whole new level. Whenever pit stops are happening, all the cars that are already on the track shoot forward by about 20... 25 miles an hour. I thought it was like 15 or 20 miles an hour in Astro 9. So they fix some things in Astro 9 and they ruin some things in Astro 9. Hmm. But overall, I still like this game more than Astro 9. It's more challenging for the most part. I never made my adjustments in my car, so it, this is not going to be as easy as I wanted it to be. I still don't have the grip that I wanted. I really regret not making any adjustments. And we got someone on my inside, don't we? No, we don't. It's Jeff Gordon just looking there. He never got there. I can say that we will get a top 15 in this race, as long as I keep on making passes. We're in the top 15 now, as I enter turn 3 from the bottom like a freaking retard. Uh, there's Bobby Labonte. He started in second place, so he's falling back quite a bit. I guess his pit crew let him down, right? That he's just not been running very well. I didn't see him a while ago as we were making our way into the top 10. Tony Stewart, who started on the pole, is back in the lead again. So... Michael Waltrips didn't. Michael Waltrips. Michael Waltrip didn't have the best pit stop. Or maybe he wasn't as fast getting onto the track. I don't know. Our pit crew was so freaking slow because of that fumble that we fell out of the top ten, and then the AI slingshotted back around us. I never got to see what happened between Michael Waltrip and Tony Stewart during pit stops. Okay, get the car turning into turn three. I'm gonna pass Bobby Labonte real quick. Slide up in front of him. Not the most fancy slide job ever, but I guess you could call it one. Let's see if we can get a top ten in this race. It's what I was aiming for coming in. I'm doubting it right now, but all I have to do is pass three cars, and we got it done. Huge run down the front stretch. I got out of the draft, and it stopped it. That air forcing the front of my car. Golly! I tried diving into turn one. This car just don't want it. Okay, then. Um, we have reached an impasse. I see what the problem is. There's a seven car. Uh, I want to make up spots, but I can't do it because they're forcing me all the way down the bottom of the track just to get underneath them. I can't do it. Fuck. I hate that. Bobby Labonte, get out of the way. Go eat your Cheerios elsewhere. 
And this is Robbie Gordon's blocking me. Uh, Ryan Newman Jr. Yeah, that's what Robbie Gordon is to me. I think the seven car is Robbie Gordon still. I'm not paying that much attention. Can I just keep it to the bottom for once in turn one? Finally. Oh, God, no contact. I already know what happens with contact right there. So we finally got into 12th. Jeff Burden is blocking me. Damn it. I'm, I'm on his outside. I don't want to be on his outside. How do you get out from his outside? I let off the gas, but that makes me go to Dad, what? I'm letting off the gas so that I can get clear of him again. But whenever I do that, it doesn't change the fact that I'm still on his outside for some reason. I guess you could say that was a crossover into turn three. We got that spot, so we're in 11th now. And the way it's playing out, I think we still have a chance of getting a top five, maybe, because we're all still grouped together over here as we make our way through the field. Pushing Jimmy Johnson's because he's not going to let me around him. Ugh. Uh, loose again because I hit the brakes. I think that was what the cause of that was. Maybe it's just me letting off the gas at an improper time. I can feel the tower coming back on because the back of the car is slinging out. It's freaking Mac kids that's just bobbling back and forth across the back stretch. Okay, some disruptions. If I mess up turn three, I'm totally using the rewind button because I deserve it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to though. Uh, I'm so far out of the bottom of the track because I was going underneath two drivers at once that we had to slow it down a ton to make turn three work. But we're going to get a runoff to turn four, and we're going to pass both Matt Kenseth and Jimmy Johnson. So, if we pass that little Debbie car over there and David Reagan in his rookie season, we might just find ourselves getting a top five in this race. And we do it. I think we have the time. It's just two laps. This car won't start turning. Jimmy Johnson throws me into the outside wall. You motherfucker, how dare you? God! This car doesn't want to turn. That wasn't helping, but... Jimmy Johnson didn't even bother to move over so that wouldn't happen. Ooh, Kyle Busch, I'm not in the mood for your shenanigans. Go away. I had my hopes up. Never get your hopes up because happy things don't happen to you when you drive Domino's car. Yeah, that wouldn't have happened if I was driving the Burger King car, you know, because fallacious reasoning is real. We're still all grouped together. We still have the chance. Come on. Get out of the way, Matt Kids. No more blocking from you. And I get out from behind him, which gives me no draft. Shit. Ah, a little pissed off Jimmy Johnson right now. Okay, we're getting a little loose. At... Dang it! I never pressed that button. What the hell? I'm sick of these guys blocking for every position. I mean, he wasn't even blocking. I was already underneath him. But damn, this car just cannot keep it to the bottom for shit. I don't know what to do. Why did they just hit the brakes in the middle of the back stretch? Okay. Come on. Turn. Turn. Come on, get the run off the corner. I don't want to be loose. Make him loose. I, I, oh, oh, wait, here we go. He blocked me. Dang it. I tried so hard to get a freaking top five. He gave me the opportunity by pulling out from in front of me, but then I wound up behind him again. Michael Walter beat my favorite driver. That's, that's really insulting to my existence, honestly. Uh, we got a top 10, that's what we came in here for, we almost had a top 5, I'm disappointed in that, but still happy how this race went. Michael Waltrip started in 4th and finished in 1st, he led 3 laps in this race. Tony Stewart started in 1st and finished in 2nd, led 8 laps, so that gives him the most laps led. Uh, J.J. Yealy, who started 11, finished in 3rd. Yeah, because I, I guess J.J. Yealy can just do good in this game, that's not right. Kevin Harvick started way in the middle of the field somewhere, 27, finished in 4th, so that's cool. Ken Schrader started 6th and finished in 5th. He almost had it in 6th, and I would have gotten 5th, but I just couldn't get around all those guys. We're all packed together. Really exciting last few laps for the finish, I suppose. And apparently Ken Schrader led some laps in this one. And here's us. Started 43rd, finished in 6th. Matt Kenseth started 16th and finished in 7th. David Reagan started 21st and finished in 8th. Jimmy Johnson started 5th and finished in 9th. And I wish he would have finished in worse. But he led 3 laps as well. Robbie Gordon started 23rd and finished in 10th, and that's the top 10. You can look at the rest of the race results if you'd like to. Bobby Labonte started 2nd, finished in 13th. Yeah, we got a look at that a while ago. Mark Martin started 3rd, finished in 18th. He led a lap in this one. You can look at the rest of the race results. So, wow. Is that Kurt Busch right there who started in 7th and finished in 31st? That's really got to suck. Our teammate, Dale Jarrett, started 18th and finished in 30th. All right, then. Dale Earnhardt Jr. started horribly and finished horribly. It in horribly. Finished horribly. Um, wow. I mean, he was doing great the Daytona 500, but then they just killed him here. 
yeah, the lack of consistency is going to make this championship really easy to win. Even though Tony Stewart did finish in front of us in this race. And that is the race results. AJ Allmendinger started 26th and finished in 43rd. He led one lap and finished. He only ran 13 laps in this race. Joe Nemechek only ran 18 laps in this race. So that's two DNFs in one race. And um, AJ Allmendinger was the guy that flew past us after pit stops had happened. I think what happened was the game overperformed him with the freaking stupid rubber banding crap, and it just overheated his engine. That'd be hysterical because he was going like what, 200 miles an hour in the middle of turn one? Why am I looking at victory lane? I guess because Michael Waltrip won. After the race at California Speedway, we are in second place, just 15 points behind Tony Stewart. That makes sense because he just obviously finished a few positions in front of us. J.G. Illy is in third, 40 back. Kyle Busch, fourth, 50 back. Jimmy Johnson, who jumped me into the outside wall with a few laps to go, is in fifth, 57 back. And the winner of the previous race, Michael Waltrip, is in 6.59 back. I'm still kind of ticked that Tony Stewart didn't win that, even though Michael Waltrip is my teammate, so I don't know. I'm, I'm very schizophrenic right now. Robbie Gordon is in 7th, 83 points back. And, yeah, we have 7 drivers within 100 points of the points lead. That is not going to last because of the lack of consistency in terms of the AI performing. But Bobby Albani is in 8th, 104 points back. Ricky Rudd is in 9th, 110 points back. And Ken Trader is in 10th, 116 points back. I don't know how the chase works in 2007, but I'm just kind of giving you the top 10, which is what I was doing in NASCAR 2005, which was the first use of the chase. I think it's like the, the top 12 or top 16. I have no freaking clue. Uh, there's Mike Wallace. Um, my teammate Dale Jarrett is in 38th place right now. That's very sad and depressing. Darn. Poor old UPS. Can't keep it up after NASCAR 2005 Let's Play ends. In the next episode, which is going to come out tomorrow afternoon, we are going to Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the UAW Daimler Chrysler 400. For those who don't remember in NASCAR 09, uh, Las Vegas was a monstrous LSD trip, and I'm looking forward to another LSD trip because, yeah, this is before they tried fixing a few things, so it's going to be a, an even bigger LSD trip of a race. It's going to be a Las Vegas trip. Or a Las Vegas strip. I don't freaking know. These are some horrible puns I'm making right now. No more. Got to end the video before it's too late. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.